Yes, and I think we do have a good chance of getting it passed this year. I think so, too. The citizens of these United States have already made up their minds on medical marijuana. It's a consistent finding whether they get a chance to vote for it in a state ballot initiative or whether they are polled on it. Everybody says it's not just cruel and not just unusual, it's insane to be denying to sick people something that is of proven medical efficacy. That ought to be the end of the argument right there. The DEA does not recognize any initiative anywhere in the United States that promotes marijuana as a safe, harmless drug that can be used for medicinal purposes. The issue of medical marijuana is not something that ought to be decided by popular referendum. I'm, I'm really pleased by that. We have a whole scientific process that served this country damn well for a long, long time in determining that. You know, and, and, and you can make horrendous mistakes. There is a system, and it's basically at the Food and Drug Administration. That's where the issue of medical marijuana should be decided, and it should be decided by doctors and scientists. The reason people have not taken marijuana through this review process is because it can't pass. It won't pass. And so they want to go this other route. And, you know, good luck to them, because the science isn't there. And it's not going to be there tomorrow either. Of course marijuana has legitimate medical value. I mean, there's no question about that. Uh, the uh, FDA came out with a statement saying that marijuana's got no legitimate medical value. They were just being political and dishonest about that, and they were criticized up the gazoo. What they meant was that there were no what are called phase three final clinical trials of the sort that pharmaceutical companies have to do to get a drug finally approved. But in fact, there's oodles of evidence about the efficacy of marijuana as medicine. It is not possible that any disease would ever be treated with smoked marijuana. Smoking is an unhealthy, dangerous, destructive drug delivery system. Smoking your medicine may be an unusual way of taking your medicine, but it works, and the reason so many people do it is because it works. It's just dumb. It's medically stupid. Why are people going to do that? The war on drugs is the last dying smell from the Nixon administration. This isn't a war, it's a misuse of the word. It's an apparatus of control. You can tell it all, by the way, by the name they give to the person who's in charge of this mad scheme, a czar. The whole point of the United States is there's no bloody czar. No monarch of any kind. And I'm proud to nominate John P. Walters, where he will serve as a valuable member of my cabinet. But the Tsar is exactly the right name for this program and for this mentality. When we push back, the drug problem gets smaller. It's absolutist, it's unquestionable, it's fanatical, and it's corrupt. What keeps this thing going is a government, especially the federal government and organizations like the Partnership for Drug-Free America, their willingness to spend hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, taxpayer dollars oftentimes, on propaganda putting out propaganda in every case that's essentially an ounce of truth embedded in a pound of lies and bull and exaggeration. Wanna get high? No way, man. That stuff's for losers. The creation of the media campaign was an enormous achievement in, in our office. Oh, the legalizers were livid. You can't fight drugs by TV. Guess what? Everybody advertises on TV, whether it's Coca-Cola to political campaigns to the value of being drug free and the dangers of using drugs like marijuana. Man, watch out! And, and it worked. We had some very effective ads. There was a 13% reduced proclivity of people to, of kids to use drugs when they saw the ad that had the actor smashing the dishes. We had another very good ad that had, um, my mommy talks to me about everything. This is a little girl. And she talks to me about this and that and this and that. And what does your mother say to you about drugs? Dead silence. Those are my two favorite ads that I thought were enormously powerful. This absurd uh, uh, continuation of this prohibition is largely a function of ignorance. In 1967, 
Because I was so concerned about this drug marijuana, I decided to do a review of the literature. I was then persuaded by Harvard University Press to do a book. The book came out in 1971, Marijuana Reconsidered. I learned that uh, what was being said about this drug was, uh, was mythological. You couldn't find the data to really support it. It turns out that marijuana came across as a remarkably non-toxic drug. Cannabis is a plant. Now, in the plant, there are somewhat more than 60 molecules called cannabinoids. THC is the most active. THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol. People find smoking marijuana very useful for a whole host of symptoms. And if you inhale it, you get the effect within a very short period of time. So you can titrate it. By titrate it, I mean uh, you can take just enough to get rid of your symptoms and stop. The government hates to admit that they've already acknowledged that marijuana is a medicine. They acknowledged it in the 1970s and 80s when they allowed dozens of Americans to receive a monthly supply of marijuana from the government's marijuana farm at the University of Mississippi. Some of those people are still alive and still obtaining it today, their can monthly canister of marijuana. Why has marijuana not been approved medically? Because it's not medicine. It's been anecdotal evidence. Well, you know, I could take this glass and fill it with gin and drink some and say, hey, I feel good. And that's about what medical marijuana is. The four, five people that you, you've talked to, well, of course they're biased uh, toward it, but that's like asking the generals in Iraq, how's the war going? You know, you're not getting an objective forest for the trees kind of an appraisal from those people. You have to look at science, not politics, to define what is safe and effective medicine in America. If we could find a politician who had the, initially the guts, but most importantly, the intelligence to see that this is the case and make it a subject, it would immediately become the next big thing. And we would shake ourselves and wonder how and why it had taken us so long to see where our own best interests lay. Drug use is an act of, of human misery. People take drugs to make themselves feel better or to escape. The genesis of the problem is in the consumer. And as long as there's consumption, there'll be a need for strict oversight. Because uh, without that, society certainly can perish. But for the DEA and for our partners, victory is one step at a time. you look at it through the years, you realize that we have been victorious. And that pendulum of success is more on our side than their side. Uh, I think I'd prefer like a little of the super silver haze for the morning. Okay, great. The EA doesn't like these word dispensaries. Uh, and, and, but for, for whatever, that's the word that's attached to it. But the fact of the matter is, they're marijuana, they're marijuana distribution centers. It's essentially what they are. And they are public okay. nuisance. All right, Josh. Thank you, sir. Hey. What right. we've been able to determine in our dispensary Thanks. investigations, these are not people coming out in wheelchairs, on crutches. These are not people that, that meet the, you know, the dying, the sick, and the injured. Those are not the type of individuals that are going into the dispensaries and that are coming out of the dispensaries with the marijuana. There's always going to be drug users. If there's a drug user, they're going to find a way in this open, free society of ours to get drugs into the country, to grow drugs in these remote areas, until which time the good guys come. That's the DEA and all our state, local, and federal partners, people like Steve Reed, find these drugs, find these marijuana plantations, and destroy them. And this is an amazing plant. That's a seven, eight-foot plant. The war on drugs is a wonderful symbol. And it's been around so much, it all, it's, it's really one word now, war on drugs. There's always been that thing. Look at that puppy. Beautiful plant. 
so much of life is based on random continuances from the past. Like there are these um, jugs in Cyprus, and you can see the men building them, and, and they have these blobs on them. Just these blobs. And you ask, well, you know, Vasiliki, why are you putting those blobs on? And he says, well, you know, that's just the way we've always done it. It turns out that if you excavate in this area, the blobs used to be female breasts. It used to be a woman. And then gradually over the years, there's a kind of a shorthand, and now it's just blobs. They don't know why they do it. It started out with a meaning, and then you have the blobs. In the same way, the war on drugs is based on a lot of that sort of thing. Whatever attack, whatever you want. We always drag along the baggage of history to the point that we don't even know that it's baggage. And those are the kinds of policies that can be the hardest to get rid of because they seem normal. If we just threw the marijuana laws off the books and said let's concentrate on cocaine, methamphetamine, and any other any type of drug, because there's a recognition that marijuana is, is not the way to go. It's it's not uh, it's not harmful. Uh, it has medicinal purposes. If if that was if that was acknowledged in this country today, I think it would have a, a devastating impact. Certainly, it's possible that the nine-year-old occasionally might get stoned, and that that would be more likely than it has been until now. But the problem is that we have to weigh what kind of damage we want to tolerate. And for me, an America where there was a certain danger that people might experience drugs who don't under the current regime would be preferable to one where drugs are criminalized because the problem is that once you criminalize drugs, then you create an underground economy where drugs command a much greater price than they would otherwise because of the danger, the illegality in handling them and selling them. And as a result, you have certain communities that are vulnerable to ending up depending on that particular economy. I think the real difference is that during the, 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 the 1920s and early 30s, when, uh, when Americans started talking about repealing alcohol prohibition, most of them could still remember what it was like when alcohol was legal. It was, they could imagine it. The problem we have today is that none of us have grown up in a world in which marijuana was legal, was regulated, was sold in shops and taxed. So the change is more difficult to make because we can't picture it, we can't imagine it. And in some respects, I think it's that lack of imagination of the fact that this really, we could just make it legal and the world would not crumble. Radio come to order. I don't know any thinking person in Washington, D.C. who thinks this should go on, this insane campaign against marijuana. You never meet anyone who's actually in favor of it. But everybody thinks it has to go on because they think everyone else wants it to. In the end, the absurdity of this will tell. The spell will be broken. <laughs>